Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Luke Ness Monster, and as always, I'm joined with my podcast co-host. Hello, I'm SideQuest. Wow, I didn't know where my hands were right now. Hey, I'm SideQuester. <laughs> and this is Somewhere in Space. This may all be happening right now. Uh, today, we've got a pretty exciting episode because uh, this is our like uh, commemoration of one year of Somewhere in Space. Uh, back then, it was called the Yet to Be Named Podcast. So we've come a long way in the last year, and... Uh, to celebrate one year, we're going to be going back to our first episode, which was uh, we're going to be going over our top five Black Series turkeys or just Black Series figures that we don't like, um, specifically figures released in 2024. The 2024 is coming to an end here, and so I think we've got a pretty good judgment of pretty good figures and pretty bad figures, but we do have a full wave of Skeleton Crew figures coming out too. So you never know. We may have to make this. We may have to remake this video here in a month or two, but um Wait, what's a what's a Christmas themed bad Grinches, uh, Grinches Black Series or, Grinches or lumps of coal? Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll do an end of the year. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, All right, uh, you want to kick it off? Yeah, I'll or kick do we it off. Want to go over the rules? Yeah, go for it. Uh, well, I guess you kind of went over the rules. Uh, so uh, it has to be a figure that was released. In 2024, in some form, could be across any platform, uh, wide release, uh, fan channel, convention exclusive, just has to have been 2024. And uh, that is the only criteria. It can be uh, sculpting, uh, accessories, whatever you want. It's it's your personal opinion and, and my personal opinion. And I know everyone's going to disagree with me, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for the comments. <laughs> yeah. I got to say this list was really hard for me because there was not that many bad figures in 2024. I had a hard time coming with five. I, I wanted to say that as well. I, it was really difficult and I had to get really nitpicky on uh, things. And so that's why I know that you're going to disagree with a lot of my choices. Uh, a lot of the people in the comments will disagree with a lot of my choices, but please understand that it was because it was so difficult to choose. Hasbro has it dialed, and a lot yeah. of the figures that they came out with, even if there were things that I didn't like about them, they're all kind of bangers this year. So anyway. Yeah. All righty. Jumping into my number five spot. Uh, this one is technically cheating because it's two figures, <laughs> but I gave it to the two A-list figures this year. Um, I kind of bunch them together because they're, they kind of release at the same time. They're the same thing. They're, they're both like figure re-releases, part of the A-list line. So that is the, uh, Din Djarin as well as the Darth Vader. And I think the biggest problem with these is that they didn't really achieve what Hasbro wanted them to do. The, their goal was to have, you know, a, a Darth Vader and a Mandalorian, arguably their two most popular figures in the Black Series ever on store shelves at, at all times. And I like the idea of that because it's great for new collectors. If they want a Darth Vader or a Din Djarin, they have a great way to go and get one. Any Walmart and Target in the nation probably has 20 billion of them on their shelves. And that's the biggest problem right now uh, is that they way overstocked them. And so now it's taking up the pegs for newer Black Series figures to come in and fill that spot. And the other biggest problem is that the selection just kind of sucked. Like the, the Darth Vader they chose was a New Hope Darth Vader. Which, don't get me wrong, the design is cool, but Empire Strikes Back Vader would have been a much better choice. Um, even the brand new Return of the Jedi Vader would have been a much better choice. They just picked the worst Vader in the line to, to have on a mass release. And Din Djarin is a much better choice because um, it is the brand new Book of Boba Fett body. The problem is he doesn't have the soft goods cape, and so like you can just go and buy the Book of Boba Fett version, and it's arguably way better, and it comes with a jetpack too, and so it comes with more accessories for the same price. So yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I uh, was walking through Walmart this morning and I saw both the A-list figures and I thought about putting them on my list and then I totally spaced on it. I'm glad you brought it up. Yes, exactly. Uh, both figures, they're great figures except for the Cape on, on Din Djarin. But um, I, I think Hasbro had a different hope for the a-list line and i think it would have been better served if instead of doing solid cases of one character maybe do uh two characters and split the case or mm -hmm. even 
three characters and and so that there could have been uh, a variety for people to buy down the line. The problem is that the kid walks into the store, they see the Darth Vader, they ask their parents to buy it for them, and they do. And then there's five other Vaders or, or seven other Vaders, depending on the case breakdown, mm-hmm. left for other people to buy. So when that kid comes back a couple weeks later, a month later, and they want to get another figure, their only option is Vader. And and yeah, so no, you brought up a very valid point, And I totally should have put that on my list. I know it's technically cheating because it's two figures, but I, I thought it would be good to bunch them together. So you never follow the rules at all. You never it's my podcast, you. our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my number five, ready for it. I'm ready. Captain Enoch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and here's why. That's so bad. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I've never been sold on the design of the character. I do like how it was executed as far as the look goes of the black series figure, but I don't like the look of the character. I don't like the faceplate thing. It's too distracting. They could have done something that was so much cooler. It would have been cool if they did like a T visor from a, a, a clone wars uh, or a, a phase one clone trooper or something like just to make it stand out. Even that being gold, that would have been cool. But the weird, like, Greek statue, dead eye staring face, I, I don't like it. The reason why I don't like the figure is uh, after I got mine out of the package and I was trying to pose it, uh, you can't. <laughs> the, uh, the, the skirt piece, the I don't know if you would call it a comma. On, um, yeah, skirt piece, it's the same thing. Yeah, whatever. Uh, uh it's so rigid. The the plastic is so thick that you can't move his thighs and it's, and it wraps around his thighs. So you can't, uh, uh, they don't even put the brakes in like they do on like the Balin or the Shin Hati to where, I mean, that's not accurate to the, to the actual costume design, but giving those brakes in the side allows you to have more articulation. And I found any way I would try to pose him. I couldn't. And the other thing is, his gun does not fit in his holster <laughs> for me. Hmm. I, I had numerous times where I, I had him on a shelf or something. He'd fall over gun went flying and I was like, I'm going to lose this. And that bothers me. Uh, so yeah, had to get really nitpicky uh, on it. But for those reasons, captain Enoch number five on my list. I can't say I agree with you, but it's uh, your list. And so it's my show welcome. too. You're welcome to put it on there. <laughs> uh, so what do you have for your number four? Uh, my number four, I gave it to the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this figure, and I think it just comes down to like the color scheme. Um, I don't mind like the light gray color, but the blue they chose is just like really like metallic-y blue, almost like you would see on like a hot rod. Um, it just doesn't look great on the figures. And when you compare it to all the other blues in the Mandalorian line, it just does not match any of the other Mandalorians on the shelf. I think it's a cool idea for a figure. I just not a big fan of the, the blue they chose for it. And I, I think it's one of those, like with how many blue Mandalorians we're getting nowadays, you have to pick and choose. And he definitely comes towards the bottom of, of the barrel when it comes to blue Mandalorians. So I actually really like the metallic blue on the fleet. Really? I, I don't, I don't have the figure. But I've seen it in the store several times, and I was like, oh, I should pick that up because it's so neat. Uh, well, because, I mean, when I worked on the car show, the metallic yeah. was like cool color scheme mm-hmm. that they would do from time to time. Um, so it, uh, it looks great on its own, but like compared to the other Mandalorians, it just stands out like a sore thumb. That I could see. That makes sense to me, uh, especially with some of the other variations of the, the Mandalorian figures where... You can tell that they're kind of mismatched, uh, you know, clamored together, uh, mm-hmm. pieced together armor. And uh, the the fleet commander looks like it's almost, I mean, in the same way that Django Fett's armor was, where it's like it was purchased at the same place. <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, and uh, so, yeah, I can I can see that. What's uh, what's your number four? My number four which I thought you were actually going to say this because it's also a Mandalorian figure. 
uh, I went for the Target exclusive, uh, the Shriekok Mando, uh, okay. the one that just the one that just came out. And it don't get me wrong, it's a great looking figure, looking. But I kind of ran into the same problem that I did with the Enoch. The skirt pieces are way too long. Uh, they're they're off center. Uh, they're not symmetrical, which gets my like uh, OCD uh, uh, fired up. Uh, and uh, another issue with the weapon, he cannot hold his gun. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. The, the I don't know if you have it, but the I don't the the gun is I think it's the same, or I think it's the same design. I don't know if it's the exact same mold as the gun that uh, Bosk uses. It's kind of got mm. like uh, he grips it with with two hands. But the uh, the handle uh, where the trigger is, it's so short and his and his uh, hand is so big that he doesn't he doesn't really it doesn't kind of lock in. So it sits at a at a weird angle and you can't really get it in a decent pose. Mm. The figure looks great, but if you try to get him posed in any sort of action uh, uh, kind of look, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work, at least for me. Yeah, uh, that's the one that I think looks good, and so I don't own the figure, and I think it's one that I'd like to pick up. Um, but no, those are again pretty valid arguments, so I I respect it. Um, but it's one that I can't really judge until I get it in hand. I don't think so. All right, halfway through number three, what do you got? My number three, I gave it to the re-release of Paz Vizsla, the mm. deluxe version. Uh, the only reason I put this one on the list because I, th I think the figure is really good. Um, it did release in 2024. Did it? It did. I'm pretty sure I bought it at Christmas last year. Cheater. Look it up. It released in 2024. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, I did. Okay. <laughs> Look it oh, up right now. Look at... <laughs> I got all my screens up ready to go. I'm not, I can look on my phone. Uh, um, on. The only reason I decided to put this one on the list uh, is just because I think the figure is good and I think I like the color scheme. I like the character. Um, it's just that it's like four. No, it's like nine dollars more than the original release. The original one came out in 20, uh, 2019, kind of alongside the rest of the Mandalorian figures, and it was twenty five bucks. Which at the time, that's a pretty expensive Black Series figures. Black Series figures were nineteen ninety nine. And so it was a twenty five dollar figure, which is five dollars more. And now, with the re-release, the exact same figure, exact same paint scheme, everything, the figure was $34.99 or like $33.99. So it's like $9 more, which just crazy to me. And at the same time, you could go out and buy the old figure for a cheaper price than just buying the new one. And that's the main reason it got the list. It just was kind of like a pointless re-release that wasn't really necessary. You are absolutely right. When you said Paz Villa, when you said Paz Vizla, I was thinking pre Vizla. Mm. And uh, so, yes, you are absolutely 100% correct. I apologize to you. Um, I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I see your points. Uh, I actually uh, walked into a Walmart a couple months ago and they had four uh, uh, Paz Vizlas on the pegs for like 10 bucks each. Wow. And I was like, oh, yeah. So uh, they were great for $10, but I totally get where you're coming from. Uh, the the increase price for a figure that they already have the mold for. I uh, I, I think you're right there. That was a good pick. And I do apologize for, <laughs> for not knowing the right character. No, it's okay. I mean, it's interesting, too, because like they could have released it for... You know, thirty twenty nine ninety nine, which is still a deluxe price, but they, they it was twenty it was no it was thirty four dollars, which is like mm -hmm. way more expensive than it originally was. So, well, and also, I mean, while we're on that subject, I was going through the list of uh, you know the entire uh, checklist of, of figures that they've come out with, and they have that Walmart exclusive um, wrecker mm -hmm. that was new overlays, new paint scheme, and was it a new head sculpt too? Or was it the same head sculpt? I think it was the same head sculpt. 
uh, and that was was twenty four ninety seven or whatever. Whereas the mm. the the first version was a deluxe figure, and that was what twenty nine ninety nine. It was twenty nine, yeah, yeah. So they could have brought uh, Paz Vizsla in at a regular price, I would think. At this point, they've come out with them a few times, and yes, like, <laughs> uh, I did buy Pre Vizsla last Christmas. <laughs> Well, honestly, I can't say I'm too upset about it though because I bought the credit collection Paz Vizsla for like three bucks back when it was I was hitting targets. So, like, that's a great figure for three bucks. I like the color scheme better than the normal version. It's got this more metallic-y color to it, right? But yeah, definitely cool. What's your number three? My number three. You ready for it? I'm ready. Kiati Mundi. You did not put Kiati Mundi on your list. I Take it back. Did. Take it back. He is one of the top 10 best did. figures of the year. <laughs> I absolutely did. You know why? I don't think I want to know why. <laughs> Just fun. tell me. Just tell me. We'll Just... Go to number two. <laughs> uh, his hands. What is up with his hands? His What's whole, wrong I mean, with his, his arms hands? in general. There, there's something off it's kind of like the same thing that they did with the the balan skull and the shin hati it's it's like something happened from design to actual uh mold making his his arms are massive and i get it it's supposed to be for the you know there's the layering of the of his jedi robes or whatever but his hands are huge put the lightsaber in his hand and it's like it's like Andre the Giant. Like argh. he's got like three fingers. He's an alien. He's got big hands. Then he should have smaller hands. If he's got three fingers. I That's don't think big he does they... because I've seen. I, I actually looked up video clips when I was researching this because I was like, "Am I wrong? Am I? Did I miss something?" So I watched uh, his uh, uh, his scene where he gets taken out in Order sixty six. I watched a couple of clips uh, from Clone Wars, and I watched the clips from the Acolyte, and he's got little tiny hands. The figure, massive hands. Mm, nah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Luke, his hands are so big, he should have been priced as a deluxe figure. <laughs> you know what they say about a figure with big hands? big box it's true it's true <laughs> uh, okay all right what do you have for number two uh, my number two and number one go pretty hand in hand um but my number two i gave it to uh balin balin skull again I th- was that released this year it was it was released uh like january of of uh 2024 like there was like people who got it overseas in 2023 and that's when you started seeing reviews of it, but it officially hit stores in 2024. So. He should have been on my list. Oh, cause he was in the same wave as the star killer. Wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yep. You're right. And it was like, it was like early January. Mm-hmm. I think the street date on them might've been January, it was January 1st. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, okay. What, what don't you like about it? I already know the answer, but. Tell me anyway. You know, I think the face sculpt and the hair and everything on this figure looks great. It looks like uh, the actor, in my opinion. Um, problem is the height. The height and the lightsaber color. Um, they should never have the red lightsaber problem to begin with. And now maybe that was, um, you know, Lucasfilm trying to keep their their stuff kind of behind closed doors. And they said, it's a guy with a red lightsaber. And so they gave him a red lightsaber. And then they changed it last minute. I don't know the behind the details and behind the scenes when it comes to that, but it shouldn't have come with a red lightsaber. And it's, it's a real shame that half of them did and half of them didn't. Um, And of course the big problem is the height. This should not be a six inch figure. He, the actor stands like six, four, doesn't he? And so he's he's a tall guy figure. It's way too short. And that, that is something that is like a bare minimum for a figure is like the correct height. And like I've, they, they should not have messed that one up in my opinion. So that's fair. And yeah, I, uh, I actually, I was going to put, um, uh, Shin Hati, uh, on, on this list, but I had the, uh, the Arcana version, the, the new one that just came out because, mm-hmm. uh, I thought they, I mean, they should have fixed it. They, I mean, they came out with it, the same thing with the Balin, mm-hmm. they came out with it, but then they re-released it and they should have fixed it. So, uh, I was going to put her on my list but 
I saved my number two for something real special. I'm interested. What's your number two? <laughs> Grand Admiral Thrawn. Man, I don't know what you have against Grand Admiral Thrawn. He looks so good. <laughs> Does it? So Does good. it look good? It's just, I mean, it's just a weird figure. I don't like the the representation of Grand Admiral Thrawn in card and animated or live action to begin with. The Grand Admiral Thrawn that I know from Legends is um, a, a little bit more authoritative and less kindly grandpa. And so across the board, uh, I, I just don't like this iteration. That's just me. I get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people that, that grew up uh, watching Rebels and watching uh, the Ahsoka show, it's what they know. And so they're like, that's Grand Admiral Thrawn. That makes sense. Uh, I, I just, from the, the Heir to the Empire books, he is much, much different. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's fair but he's vicious and and he's compassionate but he can take it away in a heartbeat and he just straight up kills people for disobeying orders or failing Mm -hmm. and uh he's a lot more calculating and 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 um what's the best way to put it he is not deceptive, but he tells people exactly what they need to be told so that they do what he wants. So that things go in his direction kind of has everything dialed. Uh, So that's just the character, but as it translates to this figure, um, he just looks, he looks too soft. I mean, and it's not a like a critique of the the actor. I mean, nothing he can uh, he he can only do so much being in the the blue uh, face paint and having red lenses and everything. Mm-hmm. But um, he just doesn't come across as the leader of a military, and so and that translates to me in the figure. Uh, I don't like the the shoulders. Uh, they it, it really inhibits the uh, articulation. Uh, I, I don't like for some reason the imperial figures that they've come out with lately. Their legs to me seem a lot longer than they should be, and it just it just looks funny. It's like their their torsos are are kind of squatty. Their legs are really long. And then the, the the final thing that bugs me specifically about Thrawn is on my copy, uh, I can't get the neck to stay aligned. So he's got the little like uh, um, pips or, or decorations uh, on his collar, and that should be, you know, front and center. But no matter which way I do it, it kind of sits to the left or it sits to the right. I can't get it dialed. Hmm. And that just bugs me. So anyway, Grand Admiral yeah. Thrawn. Definitely some yeah. valid points. I'm ready for you to disagree with me. Go. <laughs> some some valid points. I, I agree with uh, some of the stuff you said. I think the biggest thing, at least on the mold of the figure that gets me, is the arms. Like, they made a brand new torso mold for this guy to accommodate for the old arms. Like, you're already making a brand new torso mold. Why didn't you just make new arms for it, too, and throw in the butterfly joints? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the biggest thing with me, is that like you're spending money on a new mold. Why not make it right? So... You know, that's the only thing. And the only me. thing that I can think of with that is there are some characters that probably lend themselves a little bit better to butterfly joints, like a Jedi where the overlay is going to cover the articulation. But they they did it pretty well with the uh, the Jedi Luke figures that they've come out with, and not all those have the overlays. Like the 40th anniversary, it's just mm-hmm. the bodysuit, and the the one from the four pack, the the Last Command four pack. It's just the bodysuit, and those those look fine. So I get, uh, I agree with you one hundred percent that there should be butterfly joints. But I can understand why, maybe for that specific figure, that look of the imperial uh, uniform, that they were like, mm, it's not going to work, and so they got scared and didn't do it. Yeah, no, I get that. All right, here we go, buddy. Number one, what do you have this year? I mean, I'm sure you could probably use some context clues, but I gave it to Shin Hati. Um, it's got two big problems, of course. Uh, 
excluding the lightsaber problem. We've already talked about that. Uh, but the biggest problem is the face and the hair. Like, it just does not look like the actress at all. I don't know what they did wrong, but it looks bad. And I've seen people just add, like, a dark wash to the face or a dark, dark wash to the hair, and it looks much better. And so there's mm. stuff they could have done to make it look better, and it just looks more like Marilyn Monroe than it does Shin Ha T to me. I don't know. And then, of course, the problem with the legs. This is a six-inch figure. The actress is not six feet tall. Mm. Did they did they even think that one through? Like, I don't know how that gets past anybody. They're like, maybe we should check the height of the actress. Nah, she's probably six feet tall. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And when you have both Balin and Shin at the same height, you know you got problems. And so obviously there's been the leg fixes which have helped, but it's a big problem. And that's just something that I have a hard time, like, excusing from Hasbro. Like, there's stuff like, oh, they missed a weapon or they, there's a few little black lines or paint apps that are missing. Like, okay, you know, they have a budget and they have to, they have to, stay on their budget but like you miss the entire height of the figure i don't know uh, what do you yeah, think yeah i i i agree with you on that i for me i think with the head sculpt uh, in particular and actually to both of those figures to to your number two and number one uh, I, it makes me think that they designed the figures based on concept art uh or and or uh just seeing photographs of maybe the costume and so they designed it not knowing what the head sculpt was going to be like until later or the you know the the actor's heights uh that seems interesting in the same way as with the the lightsabers both of them mm -hmm. came with red lightsabers and that might have been a miscommunication but they were pushing the figures out so quickly by the time uh, everything came out in the wash, uh, they, they, they were stuck. Uh, so I totally get it for me uh, with the, the Shin Ha T uh, her hair looks strange to me because it looks like it was sculpted as if they had a photograph of her in, uh, in makeup. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the makeup chair or in uh, a static photo uh, situation. Anytime we see her in the show, they've got fans blowing and her hair is never static like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think that if they had done more of a windblown look, if they just changed the overlay, I think that face sculpt would be so much more spot on. And it, I, I think if you, you mm -hmm. saw it in passing, just with a new hairpiece, you'd be like, oh, that's her, 100%. Well, I think even if they just did a dark wash on the hair to show the depth of the hair, because she's kind of got like like a like a brownish base and then kind of like blonde highlights almost over it. Mm -hmm. And like, but with this just straight like bleach blonde look, like mm -hmm. there's no depth to it. And it just like if even a dark wash would have done wonders on the hair. She looks like she belongs on the beach in the 80s. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what's your number one okay uh i don't have this figure but i've watched a few reviews uh i don't think you have this figure either my number one is the holocom vader really it, yeah so i've seen a couple of the holocom figures in store and as i see more and more figures come out i like them less i like the line and the idea of them less. The problem with the Vader specifically is it's the first one that has soft goods. And the way it seems to have been designed is the plastic is molded in a darker translucent blue plastic so that when it's lit up, it looks like it's lighter, right? Mm -hmm. So if they, if they had gone too light, then when the lights kicked on, it would just look clear. So I get it. Mm -hmm. The problem is, the soft goods are designed as if they are already lighted. Mm -hmm. And so you get this weird thing where it doesn't match. If you don't have it lit up, he looks like he's in this like really strange, bright, uh, soft goods, uh, outfit. And then he's got like a dark suit underneath. Yeah. It's very jarring to me. And my, my, 
my thought process. I, I mean, I, I don't, I have no intention of buying it, even if it went down, uh, marked down uh, Black Friday or on clearance after Christmas. I don't think I'll ever pick it up just because it, it's just jarring to me. And I know the most, most of the time when I would display it, it would not be illuminated. It mm-hmm. would just be a basic figure. So yeah. even the other figures that they have, the, uh, the Han Solo, the uh, uh, the Darth Maul that they just came out with, um, you could have them standing on your shelf, and it might look a little dark, but it would look consistent. And this yeah. Vader just does not look good to me. I even I even own the carbonized one. I love that metallic blue. Has no basis in reality. It's totally funky, but I absolutely love it because it's so weird. But mm. that Holocom Vader, it's just too jarring for me. So that's why I actually had uh I had Shin Hati on my list. Uh she was number one and as i went uh, started knocking things down she just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed she's in my uh my uh, dishonorable discharge uh, uh section uh, as my number one but uh yeah the more i thought about it holocom vader just can't get on board with it yeah i think the figure looks okay i mean i i, I don't think it's a, a turkey by any means um i think the biggest problem for me is that Obviously, the head sculpt is made to like come apart, like you've seen with Darth Vader figures. And since it's translucent, you can so like see the glue line of where they glue on the helmet. That's my biggest complaint with it. I don't think the soft goods bother me at all. I think it's a step in the right direction to see how the proper way to do soft goods is in the future with like an Emperor or a Leia. So fingers crossed. Um, but uh, it's just it's just one of those things. Like the glue line is what bothers me. I think and. Um, I still think I'll probably pick it up because I think it's it's one of those figures we see many times as a hologram, and so it's it's I think it's a great a great choice for the hologram line, and I hope they just continue with the good figure selection. Uh, what I would have liked to see uh, now now that we've had a few figures come out, um, I know that it's much cheaper to just cast it all in the translucent blue plastic and then put it out. I would have liked to see them maybe cast it in a very light blue or even almost a clear plastic and then do sort of a wash of sorts Mm -hmm. in that dark blue so that if you just had the figure standing on your shelf, it would look kind of like a hologram. But if you put it on that stand and it lit up, it would illuminate the really light parts, but it would kind of knock down uh, the, it would get knocked, the light would get knocked down with some of that paint washing. And I think it would make for a more dynamic looking figure, Mm -hmm. either that or just mold it in a lighter blue plastic and have that light uh, uh, soft goods and then cut down on the brightness of the, the, the light in the base. That's yeah. The, the only advice that I could give, but um, yeah, I I don't have. I got the um, uh, the Bo Katan when it was on clearance at Target, and played around with it for a day. Oh, hey, it, li- it lights up. That's kind of neat. And then I decided I didn't want it, and I just I got rid of it. So I got the Bo Katan from Target last year, and I still have not opened it. <laughs> I got it like I got it in like December of last year. Have not opened it. So. Uh, if it would have been released in 2024, it could have made your list. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a bad figure, but I, I don't, I don't have any any grievance against the the Holocom line. So, already, so uh, we've also both picked out a anti turkey, which is a figure we think is really good, as well as an all time turkey, which is not limited to 2024, but just the entire line. What we think like the worst figure is. So, uh, what is your anti turkey? My anti-Turkey uh, 2024 figure, probably my favorite figure in a really long time. I got to give it to Starkiller. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that I, one's that's a great one. Thank you. Uh, I, it, the The figure came out in the three pack in 2023, but the single release was in the very beginning of 2024 in that same wave with uh, Balin and Shinati. It's just, 
it's an incredible figure and they put so much detail in, in into it so many paint apps uh into it that it just i mean it's got to be one of my all-time favorite figures yeah i like it for me it's just it's just one of those that i have the like the three pack version and so like i don't even pay attention to the single release just because i think the three pack version is so much better that, <laughs> you know all right what's your anti turkey uh, my anti turkey for 2024 i gave it to the night trooper part of the enoch two pack um this one really surprised me i didn't know how i felt like going into it but after getting the figure open like 90 percent of the figure is a brand new sculpt it has like the red bandages sculpted into it it's got the gold cracks sculpted into it and it just turned out so freaking good um this one really surprised me and it's gonna 100 percent be in like my top 10 of the year so really excited for it that's a really good choice. Yeah, I, I was uh, really impressed with it, too. I thought it was just going to be, you know, the gold paint uh, put over the top like the arms on the mm. Captain Enoch. But head to toe, there are new aspects to it. And yeah, good choice. That's a fantastic figure. What would you say your all time anti turkey is? Ooh, we did this last year and I want to do something different than what I think I might've said last year because, uh, the, uh, the force awakens Ray is really bad, but I think that was on our list last year. So, uh, I decided to do something that was 2020 or later because I think by this point, Hasbro should know better. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going with the single uh, boxed release of Grogu with the pram and the accessories that wow. we already got. In the oh, wow. Room. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah, that <laughs> it, I, I think that it was unwise to try and release that figure on its own. And it didn't have the second head sculpt that they said was going to come with it. You know, right, I just you... have to I just have to disagree with you because I love that figure. It comes with a little necklace, it comes with uh, a bunch of accessories, the pram. Like it's a cool figure. Now, is it worth 25 bucks? Absolutely not. Um but it's one of those it sold great from what I could tell and um my review video got like 10,000 views on it. Like it's a good figure. I mean, I it just it's one of those like I think they were tired of packing them in like deluxe packs like with with Mando and so I understand he deserved a single release, but I think there's more they could have done with him. But but no, I, I don't think he's the worst figure of all time. I think the worst figure of all time is Admiral Haldo. <laughs> no explanation. It's Just Admiral vice, Haldo. Vice Admiral Haldo. My, I didn't. I did not mean to give her a promotion. I completely forgot that Admiral Akbar got killed. It. He died. It. He blew it up. <laughs> so. Technically, she got promoted to, to Admiral after he died. So, yeah. Well, you've watched The Last Jedi more than I have, obviously. He got he got thrown out the into space with Leia, but he doesn't have the Force, so. Wow. That's a shame. That's, 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 uh, that's an awful way to... Ryan, Ryan Johnson really is like, what's an ins insignificant character that everybody loves? Let's just kill him off. That's going to do it for the podcast. If you guys did enjoy, go down, hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, hit the like button, subscribe. Consider hitting that join button down below, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.